Hello. In this video, we are going to discuss the synthesis of cyclic ethers by an intramolecular Williamson synthesis. Recall that in the intermolecular Williamson synthesis, we have the nucleophilic attack of a nucleophile, which is an alk oxide, on an alkyl halide. We get the product of the ether, R, O, R prime, and the leaving group. Now, in the case where the alk oxide and the halide are in the same molecule, we can have an intramolecular nucleophilic attack, which leads to a cyclic ether. Here we have 2-chloroethanol. And we see that this molecule has an hydroxy functionality, which will eventually become our nucleophile. And we also have a good leaving group, the halogen of chlorine. The first step in the synthesis is to abstract the acidic hydrogen of the hydroxy group using a strong base. And this converts the hydroxide into an alk oxide. The next step is a nucleophilic attack of the alk oxide on the electron deficient carbon that is holding the leaving group chloride. The chlorine leaves with its electron, so this bond breaks, and we end up with, and we have a cyclic ether with a three membered oxirane ring, and this important cyclic ether is called ethylene oxide, or known as EO for short. Here is a ball and stick model of our 2-chloroethanol, showing the hydrogen atoms as yellow balls, the two carbon atoms are black, the leaving group, our chloride, is green, and we see the oxygen and the hydrogen of the hydroxy group. The first step in the reaction is the abstraction of the hydrogen atom from the hydroxy group, and it leaves as H+, so it leaves behind its electrons, which we're representing here as this spring. Now the oxygen, with its electrons, is correctly positioned for a backside SN2 attack on this carbon. One thing to be uh, careful of is that we have arranged this, or I've arranged this, so that the oxygen is in exactly the right position for the nucleophilic attack. But the molecule might not necessarily always be in that particular conformation. Here our reactant molecule is arranged and on in the style of a Newman projection. And we notice that the chloride and the alk oxide oxygen are in a gauche a conformation, and that the nucleophile is not in correct position for a backside attack. Therefore, in this particular conformation, the intramolecular SN2 Williamson synthesis is simply not possible. Now, if the two substituents, the chlorine and the oxygen, are in an anti configuration, now the nucleophile is in the correct position for a backside attack in an SN2 type reaction. Because ball and stick models are primarily designed for the ground state configurations of compounds and not particularly designed to show transition states, it is a little difficult to show the transition state of this reaction, but we do know that the nucleophile is going to do a backside attack. And at the same time, the leaving group, chlorine, is going to depart. We also know that we have inversion of configuration at this particular carbon, which is difficult or impossible to show with a fixed ball and stick model. 
but the result will be as follows. So we have a bond form between the nucleophile oxygen and the alpha carbon that was holding the leaving group. The two hydrogens have now moved forward because we have an inversion of configuration. And if we look at it from the side, we see that we have a three-member oxyrane ring. We have a cyclic ether. One thing that this ball and stick model does show quite well is that we had to show these particular bonds using the springs because the wooden sticks just simply wouldn't fit. But even with the springs, we notice that it takes a good deal of maneuvering to get the springs to fit and stay in the wooden balls. So this does accurately represent, at least to a small extent, the high reactivity and instability of ethylene oxide. Here is the transition state for the intramolecular Williamson reaction to form ethylene oxide. The leaving group is chlorine to the right, and we see the alkyl oxide oxygen to the left. The lengths shown are the distances from the alpha carbon in the transition state. In this SN2 reaction, the alkoxide oxygen, shown in red to the left, is the nucleophile, and the chlorine atom to the right, shown in lime green, is the leaving group. Here we've added Lewis dots to show the lone pair of the nucleophile and the bonding pair between the alpha carbon and the leaving group. In a concerted reaction, the lone pair of the nucleophile forms a new bond between the nucleophile and the alpha carbon at the same time that the bonding pair between the alpha carbon and the leaving group chlorine leaves with chlorine as chloride, thereby breaking a bond. This end-on view, a la a Newman projection, shows clearly that the nucleophilic alkoxide oxygen and the leaving group chlorine must be in an anti-orientation for the SN2 reaction to take place. The reaction produces ethylene oxide, shown here. Here is the computed structure of the product ethylene oxide, showing some of the important parameters. The carbon-oxygen bond length is 1.431 angstroms. The oxygen atom is shown in red. We see that it's very nearly an equilateral triangle with the carbon-oxygen-carbon angle being 61 degrees and the carbon-carbon length of 1.467 angstroms. A similar reaction could have been run, but now with bromine as the leaving group. The bromine is the bright red atom to the right. The alkoxide is the nucleophile to the left. And we see the bond lengths and angstroms at the computed transition state for this intramolecular Williamson synthesis.
if we begin with the 3 chloropropanol, we can form a four membered ring ether. Here is a graphic of the computed transition state for this intramolecular reaction, showing the oxygen nucleophile to the left and the chlorine chloride leaving group to the right as lime green. We can see that the bond between oxygen and the alpha carbon is forming just as the bond between the alpha carbon and chlorine is breaking. Here as we've done before, we've added Lewis Das to show the important lone pair of the nucleophile incoming, as well as the bonding pair between the alpha carbon and the Lieben group, shown to the right. In a concerted reaction, the lone pair on the nucleophile comes into the alpha carbon to form a new nucleophile carbon bond at the same time that the bonding pair between the carbon and the leaving group leaves with chlorine as chloride, thereby breaking a bond. The resulting product shown here is propylene oxide. Here we see the computed parameters of propylene oxide. Most notably, the very nearly right angles of each of the bond angles in the four-membered ring. This end-on view shows that the four-membered ring is almost entirely planar. If we begin with 4-chlorobutanol, this is the transition state, the computed transition state, for the intramolecular Williamson synthesis for that situation. The bond lengths are shown in angstroms. Here is a ball and stick model of the incredibly useful laboratory reagent, a cyclic ether, tetrahydrofuran, which is generally known by its initials, THF. In table one, we summarize the results of the transition state analysis for the intramolecular Williamson synthesis to form cyclic ethers. In particular, we've looked at the cases where the leaving group is chloride and also cases where it's bromide and the relevant parameters are listed in the table. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.